Hello everyone. As we can see, there's no way to get close to the base of these trees with my big mower. And it's very difficult with my lawn tractor. It's time to trim the lower branches from these trees to create some headroom for mowing. But I don't want to do all that work without power tools. Before I go spending a lot of money on new equipment, I'm going to try reviving two old chainsaws that have been in the family for as long as 40 years. Sorry about all the wind noise in this video. It's too much, so I'm switching to narration as needed. I have these two old home light chainsaws. One is a home light Super 2, and the other is a home light Super 2. I'm trying to get one chainsaw running for now. I've got that one all apart, as you can see. It kind of looks like a basket case at the moment. This is the smaller of the two. It has a 14 inch bar and the other one has a 16 inch bar. In the meantime, look at that. This whole case is plastic. This one here, that's a cast metal housing. This older saw is from like the 1970s. It's got an automatic oiler on it. There's no safety on it, on these triggers. Two triggers and of course the tanks empty oof it hasn't been started in ages I'm gonna put just a little fuel in it to see if it might fire. Maybe I'll look at the spark plug. I'll do that first. Oh, that's a very dirty foul looking plug. It's a Bosch. It's certainly not the original. The one I got from the other chainsaw is, oh, Champion. They look just about the same. This also looks a lot cleaner. I think I'll try this one. First I just want to see how this turns over without a plug in it. All right, I need to work on this recoil. I've got to remove this D-handle to separate the cover from the case. These are all slotted pan head screws. 
The newer 16 inch saw has star socket heads. This recoil cover is very gummed up. I need to clean that out. This recoil unit is so gummed up, it won't even rewind when it's off by itself. I'll need to start by disassembling and cleaning it. These covers look almost the same. Just out of curiosity, except that this one is cast metal and this one is plastic. Look at that. The plastic cover from the other saw almost fits this one. The biggest difference is two screw holes that don't line up on the bottom. I'm going to try it anyway to speed this process up. I need to tighten the chain before I try starting it. One of the biggest problems with these Homelite Super 2's, besides being cheaply made, is that there's only one stud holding the bar in place. It's ridiculous. They're notoriously unstable and come loose all the time. Notorious with me, anyway. I'm trying to clear the crud there to see. I don't see a tensioning screw there. It must be missing. I guess I'll just have to hold it. Dangle it by the bar and it'll self-tension. These things always need to be readjusted and tightened after a short period of runtime. I don't care at this point. If I can get it running right now, I kind of need to use it. I mixed this fuel up fresh yesterday. I definitely don't want to fill the tank at this point. I just need a third to a half tank to allow it to start. One thing working with chainsaws, at least these chainsaws, whatever your work surface is, it's going to end up covered with oil. There's not much you can do to avoid that. It doesn't seem to be firing. Let's pop the spark plug out and see if there's any spark or if the plug got wet. Which would indicate it's getting fuel. I really can't tell.
I'm going to put a jumper on the electrode here and jumper it to the frame somehow. Here's a spark. Yeah, there was a spark, but it was weak and intermittent, so I wasted my time trying it again. I may as well look at the carburetor and fuel supply side of the equation. Naturally, the air filter is totally trashed. If it doesn't fire on starting fluid, it isn't going to fire. This really wouldn't be happening if it had a decent spark. With direct shots of starting fluid into the carburetor, this thing doesn't show any hint of firing. One more shot. So the engine didn't fire at all, even when I sprayed starting fluid into it. It never even tried to fire. So I'm thinking I don't have a good spark. In order to get the ignition coil out, I pulled the engine out of the case. There's two screws in the top and two screws in the bottom and it pulls right out with a little coaxing. After removing the spark plug, the coil is held in place with two screws. I know the ignition coil in the other saw is working and it looks like a direct replacement for this one. So I'm going to use it for testing this saw. That's all there is to it. They appear to be virtually identical. So we'll see if this gives us a spark, and if it does, I'll just leave it here and buy a new one for the other saw. Two screws is all it takes. close to the flywheel. With both coil mounting screws in place, I gently wedged a flathead screwdriver between the flywheel's magnetic surface and the coil module. This allowed me to lightly tighten the mounting screws while maintaining a significant gap between the flywheel and the coil. Okay, so I put this replacement coil on the engine and I provided an excessive gap between the flywheel and the coil. So now there's too much gap between the coil and the magnetized section of the flywheel. We'd like to set a reasonable gap there, so I'll just resort to the good old matchbook trick I've been using for 50 years. Slip the matchbook in there between the magnetized section of the flywheel and the stacked metal plates of the ignition coil. Now just loosen it up, both screws.
the flywheel magnets snap the coil against the flywheel, with the matchbook between them establishing a uniform gap. It's pinched in there pretty good, so that's my gap. Now let me make sure both curved sections of the coil are actually against the magnetized section of the flywheel. The curve of the coil should be matching the curve of the flywheel. The magnet is pulling the coil flat up against it with the matchbook between them. So all I need to do is snug these down and that should be an adequate gap to find out if I get some spark out of this. It seems good. I should probably clean all this muck out of here, or at least a bunch of it. I think the muck is pretty much going to stay for now, or at least the hardened part is. It's pretty well hardened on there. That throttle linkage needed to go together as the engine was going into the case. That spark looks a lot better than it did before. Okay, let's see what happens. Yes, that really started on the first pull. That was probably the first start in over 20 years. The old bar and chain is now installed. A new bar and chain installation will be shown later in this video. It's time to try to tune the carb a little bit. Let's see if we can't clear up that smoke a little. A new fuel filter won't hurt anything. I had actually removed the old one to make sure it wasn't preventing the engine from starting. It's very simple. It just dangles inside the fuel tank at the end of the fuel pickup line. Smoke has significantly cleared up, for now.
Okay, I need to do this. This is a duckbill valve. It's a tiny check valve that allows air into the fuel tank vent, but prevents fuel from leaking out. It goes into the vent hole near the top of the tank here, just like that. I've been spilling a lot of this fuel out because every time I tip the tank, it spills out the vent hole. Well, that's what the duckbill valve is intended to prevent. So, I'll have fewer spills now. So, blew it all out, blow things off with compressed air, it gets all the remaining residue out and dries everything off. Looks good. Ready for reassembly. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Meanwhile, I got this cord. This is braided nylon cord I got from the big box. The cord has to be threaded through the hole in the tiny flat washer. So there's the pull handle and there's a little washer there that goes inside this hole in the pull handle. It gets pulled in so that this knot doesn't pull through. And this won't be the end of it. This is how it would be. But I'm going to leave some extra so I can shorten it or adjust it as I wind the spring and figure out how this goes back together. Uh, I do know that that rope was about 26 inches when I measured it. So that's way more than enough.
braided nylon cord, one in, one eighth inch by 48 feet, and it is 40 pound working load. Okay, so this first has to go through the hole here. Then lay it into the spool so it can be grabbed with a needle nose or tweezers or something to pull through. And the knot I'm doing is just going to be through there, through the same way again, just to make a nice big fat knot like that. the excess I'm cutting over here because there's a piece of plywood on the floor of the truck on the bed of the truck all right now how do we know which way to wind this in there Well, it should be simple, really. These teeth engage going in that direction. So you want the rope to pull in that direction. So if you wind this way, it pulls in that direction.
it. I mean, that's as far as it winds. So. Okay, I got the spring contained in there. I wrapped it around the hub on the other side of this pulley. And I put, dropped it all in. It's, it's, I don't think I can even show you on camera how that goes in. It goes down in there. There's a hook that goes down in there and hooks into a spot that's designed for it to fit in there. Okay, so that's good. Now, let me just make sure that's tight. And then, now I can adjust the length of this cord. It's definitely too long. <laughs> Keep a little bit of tension on it maybe, like right there. Okay, hopefully that's good. I'm gonna double this knot up so it doesn't pull through that little washer. I don't think it will, but just to be sure, and cut this off over on my cutting board. Okay, one recoil starter back into decent working condition. Might as well put this kerosene to good use here while I have it. After it's been soaking for 24 hours, not too bad. There's this little metal cage sort of thing that goes in here first. Just sort of squeezes in there. And I got a new air filter for this. First new air filter since 1979. <laughs> the filter retainer is obviously missing in action. Fuel line goes on over here. I'm ready to slide this into the case. Making sure the spark plug cable is in its proper position. Nice. Don't forget the throttle linkage. Before I secure the engine with screws, I forgot this one minor detail again.
The throttle linkage needs to be installed and engaged into the trigger and throttle levers at the same time the engine is sliding into the case. I've got to kind of do the dance here. Gradually sliding the engine into the case. There it is. Now I'm not going to tighten it yet, just get it mostly screwed in. You want to keep it loose so you can maybe move things around a little bit if the other screws don't line up with the holes perfectly. I think this ground wire will work in here. This goes up to the bottom of the run stop switch. Comes down and plugs into the ignition coil. And all it does Now this supposedly is a grounding switch, so when you hit stop, it grounds this out. Just like any small engine where you ground that ignition wire out, it'll stop. Okay. Wow, I think I'm ready for the case. Simply goes on. Let's see, these are okay. So this little plastic cover needs to go on there next. seated in there properly somehow. All right, let me loosen this up. So I guess you don't want to tighten these until the cover's on. There we go. That little black tab was keeping it out. Just a little piece of plastic.
Time for the spark plug. I set the spark plug gap to 30 thousandths. Now I don't know how much fuel may be left in here. It would be very interesting to see if this fires right up. That fuel line through the filter all the way to the carburetor is empty. So. Used motor oil for chain lube. sharpen the chain, but there's nothing left on this to sharpen. It looks like it smokes less after it's warmed up. Saw did okay. And here's the results. Not bad. I can get under there now, that's the main thing. These new bars and chainsaw chains have arrived for both of the saws I'm working on. But I'm going to install this one on this saw, the one that I already have running, and try it out today. So here we go. All right, so first things first, I'm going to get this chain up in there around the sprocket. around the sprocket. Set this bar in there.
up that chain tensioner a little bit here. Oh yeah, that's too tight. Okay, it'll help hold everything in place while I tighten this down. Right, this knot is one knot on one stud holding this in here. Tension adjustment screw is in here. Take that up just a little bit. Another quarter turn. It's pretty good right there. This saw cuts so much faster and easier now, it isn't funny. It feels like a completely different saw with the new chain on it.
Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.